Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seek and Destroy stream. And we are here with Resident Evil Code Veronica X. God dang, that's a long title. <laughs> um, and uh, we tried this already before, like a week ago, and I couldn't get it to work. The audio was screwed up, and somebody said, you know, if you start a party chat, you can adjust the audio from the game to your voice in there. So hopefully we sound good now because before you could barely hear my voice over the cutscenes and stuff um but i think now this will work uh, i think uh, i think you'll be able to hear me uh more than the game so i think i finally figured out yeah i i never even thought of that to create a party chat i never even thought of that um so uh and i can't remember who recommended that to me but I think uh, I, that was a good move. What's up, cunning in the house? I'm sorry I don't have a camera. This is my PS4. I just got it for my birthday, and this is my first time streaming on it. Uh, besides, you know, the test we tried last week that didn't work. Um, so I apologize for uh, seems good. Uh, okay, cunning says audio seems good. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to dive into this. We've been playing. I've played all the Resident Evil games that are out on the X, uh, Xbox One on my channel before, but this is only available on the PS4 as far as backwards compatibility. They never made an updated version for the Xbox One. So uh, I'm happy to have this game. <laughs> like, I'm so happy, because this is probably next to the first and second Res Evil, which I think are tied for my favorite Res Evil game. They're both equally awesome to me, uh, but Code Veronica is definitely a close second. I love this game tremendously. So, uh, Cunning, thank you for being here for my first PS4 stream. And everyone else who's watching later on YouTube, thank you as well. I'm not going to do a long intro. We're going to dive right into this with a new game. And I think I messed with the Resident controls. Um, but yeah, I'll do uh, do what I can. I think I changed the controls. Like X normally will have like be a select button, but I changed it to be the cancel button. The American Midwestern town, Raccoon City, has been completely decimated due to the T-Virus outbreak that was instigated by the international corporation Umbrella. Claire Redfield <laughs> arrived in Raccoon City to search for her lost brother, Chris. <laughs> What's up, Knox and Bucky? Uh, sorry, I don't have a camera. I just got a PS4 for my birthday, like, two weeks ago. So this is my first time streaming on it, and I, have, I don't have the money to buy a camera just yet for it. So I apologize that you can't see my face. I promise you I'm not that good looking. So you're, you're okay. <laughs> so as you can see with that intro, this is three months after the events of Resident Evil 2, um, after the outbreak of Raccoon City. And they do mention Sheena Island, so kind of solidifying that story from Resident Evil Survivor into canon, even though a lot of people probably wish that game never existed. <laughs> Unfortunately, according to this game, it does. Welcome to your new home. <laughs> but thank you guys for being here. Her name is Claire Redfield. We caught her trespassing in our Paris lab facility 10 days ago. She apparently infiltrated the complex looking for her lost brother, Chris Redfield, one of the surviving members of RPD's famous STARS teams. And as we learned in Resident Evil 2, the Nintendo 64 version, there was an extra file you can find as Claire in the B-Games, or as Leon in the B-Games, that tell you that Chris left to go to Europe, specifically, to take down Umbrella. And that's what Claire is doing. It took her a few months to, to find out where in Europe, but she went to the Paris facility for Umbrella. And this sequence here that you're seeing is actually, I think, Alexander Witt, who directed, he was the first unit director of Black Hawk Down, and he was actually the first unit director of Avengers Infinity War, actually, that just came out. But he directed Resident Evil 2, the movie, Ap it was called Apocalypse. And this, that sequence there with, you know, um, and this part here, 
he just stole right from the video game. Like, there's a moment where Mila Jovovich's character runs by a bunch of glass and a helicopter shooting at her, and then this moment uh, right here where she drops the gun, and this is all, like, he lifted it directly and put it into the movie. Shazam! I like Claire Redfield. This is actually the last time we see her in a video game until Resident Evil Revelations 2, uh, which came out like well, over 12 years later uh, after the release of this game. No, longer than that. Yeah. But I appreciate you guys being here tonight. Thank you, Cunning, for, for being in here, dude. Hope you're doing well, sir. And yeah, because I've never played this game on stream before, I am probably going to talk a lot about the lore of this game, the storyline. It's awesome. It's so awesome. They actually made a manga of this that was re-released in America and uh, by Wildstorm Comics. Jim Lee used to run that company before he sold it to DC Comics. And uh, I wish they would reprint that stuff because it's awesome. It's like a really good adaptation, very faithful adaptation of this video game. Oh, snap. Knocks in the house. And this guy, Rodrigo, he doesn't get a big backstory, but what little they give is kind of neat. He's the guy who caught Claire. Um, but uh, I don't know how much he knew about Umbrella's, like, super secret experimentations. Because he turns out to be a semi-good person, roughly. Or at least in his in his last breaths, he does something good. And by the way, the first time I ever played this game, <laughs> I, the first time I ever played this game, I uh, oh come on, I probably shouldn't have messed with the controls. There we go. Um, the first time I played this game, I actually played it in Japanese. Uh, I had a Dreamcast, and I just could not wait for the American version, so I modded my Dreamcast to to play imports, and I I bought an import version of this game. And uh, the worst part is, is that on the very back cover, they reveal probably the biggest spoiler in this game, which I won't say here for in case the few of you, in case anyone watching later on YouTube hasn't Perfect. ever seen this game played for some reason, um, but. Uh, yeah, the biggest spoiler yes. in this game, they put a picture of that character right on the back cover of the Japanese version. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like so mad. In any case, this prison's been taken over. Troops have been wiped out. What are you saying? You're free to leave the complex. But you may as well know you have no chance of getting off this island. Rodrigo is his name. What about you? What are you going to do? Don't worry about me. All right. Yeah, I can get used to these controls. I was going to say, should I change them back? So this is a little tip here. A hemostatic capsule is on the floor. It's empty. So that's what would have probably stopped his blood loss and stuff. Um, but you get a chance later. It's a completely optional side mission. But uh, you'll, you'll see that um, WKD4496 Claire Redfield. And this is uh, Paris Unit Leader. Rodrigo Juan Raval. Uh, you'll get a chance later where you can bring him some pills. Um, so what I was saying is when I first played this in, in Japanese, the the rough part was um, was the fact that uh, I, I didn't know what to do. Like it, at the beginning, all the text was in Japanese. The, uh, the dialogue was in English, um, but the text was in Japanese. And, uh, and so at the beginning when it was like, you know, I can't see who that is on the other side of the gate. And it's basically hinting for you to, you know, equip the lighter. I didn't know because it said it in Japanese. So I was like, oh, crap, I can't. I don't know what to do. Oh, here we go. This is also the last, uh, last Resident Evil game that showed this sequence where you can go through a door or go upstairs and it cuts to a first person POV of it. 
Uh, and this is kind of the ending of the first, what I call, Generation 1 of, um, of Resident Evil. Uh, after this is Resident Evil 4, and that's definitely, um, you know, where a lot of, like, I would call Generation 2 Resident Evil fans came in. And for some reason, we can't get the, uh, we can't get the, uh, suit, oh, there it is, we can get the suitcase now. Um, oh, you're from Colombia? Oh, awesome, well, thanks for watching from Colombia. Yeah, I'm sorry, my, uh, my Espanol no bueno. <laughs> I can, uh, maybe I, I know a little bit here and there just to get by, because I work in sales, um, for Lego. So, some, so I know a little bit sometimes to talk to customers, but I'm not very... I'm not very fluent, I'm sorry to say. I think besides Resident Evil 3 also, this is the second time in the franchise where you actually see zombies come out of the graves. Um, which is not something you ever really saw in the Romero movies. A lot of people think they had that stuff in, like, the, the Dawn of the Dead and the Night of the Living Dead um, and Day of the Dead. You never really see zombies come out of the ground in those movies. Um, oh, no! Dang it! Can we kill one of them? Nope. Oh no, dang it! Crawly zombies! Alright. Handling business. Stay down, dude. <laughs> Alright. Sweet. That makes this area a little bit easier to come back to later. Yeah, the knife is great in this game. Oh yeah, we need the fire extinguisher before we can put that out. And man, I'm so glad the audio is working on this now. Uh, I can't remember who recommended to me to start a party and adjust the audio in the party, but thank you, whoever you, you are. I think it was, oh, it was my friend Alex. My friend Alex, the, yep, we were on the phone the other day. And he told me, he's like, create a party, dude, and adjust the audio in the party. Arguably, a lot of people's least favorite Resident Evil character. We're right there. I'm coming over. This is uh, Steve, right? Burnside, something like that. Leonardo DiCaprio-looking dude. Misunderstand. But I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up. Make one wrong move and I'll shoot. Relax, beautiful. I said I was sore. My name's Steve. I was a prisoner on this island. And I'm guessing you're not from Umbrella either. No, I'm Claire. Claire Redfield. Claire? Hmm. Nice. I'll remember that. Echo, what are you doing? If you hear growling behind me, it's just my dog. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he likes Steve either. Really, dude? What are you growling for? You don't like Steve? Oh, calm down. I don't want you Steve ain't me. that bad. <laughs> He'll only slow me down. Oh man. Sweet, good, because I need that. Uh but before we get into that, let's uh I like rocking the knife as long as I can in this, because ammo is pretty scarce in this game. I can't remember. If, I guess we can't swipe him. Nope. But he does have bullets on him. Echo, be good, alright? I 
All right, now let's see if I can remember. I, I remember the puzzle. The first puzzle I got stuck on after, you know, when I was playing the Japanese version. Uh, <laughs> the first puzzle I got stuck on is actually coming up. Because uh, obviously I couldn't get out of the... Um, the, whatchamacallit, the, the cell at first. I was trying, I was like, oh, I gotta equip a lighter. I, you know, it took me a minute to understand that. But, uh, the, the next thing I, that was hard to do was this part coming up, uh, because I couldn't read it. It was in Japanese. All the cutscenes, the voice acting was in English on the Japanese version, uh, which is pretty standard and typical for imports. Um, but yeah, when I was when I played this, I remember I almost rage quit because I was like, I don't know Japanese, and this was kind of uh, oh shoot, this is a little bit pre-internet. Um, I mean, internet was around, but I, it wasn't like I could just look up a Japanese on it. Um, although I did try. Oh, shoot. All right, good. We, we made it through that. Let's heal. All right. I know we got a ton of bullets, but I'm still gonna... Well... Yeah, because I think the next area we go into is, like, tight hallways. So I'm gonna make sure we have, uh... I'm gonna make sure I use the, you know, use some bullets. So this puzzle, this is where I was really hard uh, to figure out without knowing Japanese. Look at that, 3D printer, kind of. It's a 3D scanner, but it'll make a 3D item. Maybe we'll spend some time later and read all the files, but for now I just want to kind of move through this. What are you doing here? Chris Redfield. Is he a relative of yours or something? You mean my brother? Ah. Your siblings. And that's what I also like about this game well, is that your brother is under surveillance by umbrella. It, it follows what? themes. Like it, it has themes and and follows them like throughout the story, uh, siblings being Leon one of the biggest ones. Uh, you have monitored. Chris and Claire versus good thing I have um, the Ashford twins, uh, Alexia and, uh, and um, uh, Alfred. Latitude and, longitude of this place. <laughs> uh, and you learn a lot more about Umbrella in this too. To come help. Thanks. I'll do that. Hey, I was just kidding. There's no way he could get here, even if he is your brother. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. No way. He won't come. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. Believe me, I know. <laughs> what was that all about? Projected anger. Oh, Steve. All right, so we got that. So basically, we can't leave with this metal emblem, so we have to make a, a like a non-metal copy of it, like a plastic copy. Uh, the email to Leon has been sent, so yeah, there is your little Leon reference, uh, which is funny because that seemed to be what happened to Leon after the uh, the second video game. Is he was just he reached everyone through email, like uh, Ark Thompson and Resivol Survivor. That's what happened to him. He got an, he got contacted by Leon that there was a facility full of, um, you know, Umbrella Mr. X monsters or something on an island called Sheena Island. And so he went to investigate. And it's like, why would Leon endanger, like, someone else and bring them into the fight against Umbrella like that? Like, why wouldn't Leon go deal with it on his own? All right, so now we just got to put this alloy... And the machine does all the work. Well, I'm glad I could help out, X-Force. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I mean, just let me know. Kitty Bunny, what's up? How's it going? Welcome to my first PS4 stream. 
So I can't remember what goes in here. Oh yeah, the plate does. Okay. I was like, I knew something did. Uh, I'll catch you another night. Uh, I'd stay and watch, but I'm passing out. Hey, that's okay, Kitty. I appreciate you popping it at all. We might uh, come back tomorrow night just to finish this, because I imagine I won't finish this all tonight. Uh, but we're going to play as, as long as we can. I'll probably play for like... What is it? Almost midnight? I'll probably play for at least another hour. Um, and then if I can go longer, you know, later, I, uh, like if I can go longer, I will. But uh, we will probably play again tomorrow. I got to be up early in the morning. I got to go in for a, a meeting at Lego. I'm still not back to work until Monday at Lego, but uh, I got a meeting in the morning. Uh, and then once I get through that meeting, I have a couple hours to kill, but I got to work on like a couple videos at that point. And then uh, tomorrow night, I'll be, you know, I'll be here, I'll be home, and I probably won't even have to go into Lego on Monday till the afternoon, so. We're gonna, I'll leave one green herb down there. Okay, don't push yourself too hard. I, you know me, I won't. I mean, I probably will, but, but not tonight. I don't want to be up too late, because my, obviously my roommate is gonna be, you know, he's sleeping, or he will be soon. I mean, it's the weekend, so he might be up for a little bit, but. Good night. Yeah, you too, kitty. Have a good night. Thank you again for popping in. Here we go. I was like, <laughs> go. And this is also, you notice the camera's moving a little bit. That's also something new that was added to the Resident Evil franchise. I think there was a few moments like that in Resident Evil 3 with Nemesis, just to add some to the tension where he's chasing you and the camera might move with you. But uh, this is probably the, the biggest example of it. Because um, it's the camera's a lot more fluid, less static, but still keeping that Resident Evil feel. Whoa! I knew there was some monster out here, but I didn't know what it was. I was like, what? What is out here? All right, there's... Oh, there's crossbows. Um... Shoot, there's arrows there and shotgun shells there, but... We don't need them. Sorry, I was snacking on a can of Pringles. It was okay, but not a big fan of cardboard, though the plastic lid was decent tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, no problem, man. What kind of Pringles? Were they, like, flavored? Or were they just plain Pringles? Can't she just kick the door in? The one with the broken handle? Yeah, I guess she could if, if this was a, a human... If it was, like, a game where you could do stuff like that and, be, and act like a human being. Because that's what I would do. Uh oh! oh. Ugh. I can't read the code. One one two five. That's what it looks like. Oh, uh, you can't enter the passcode now. I think yeah, they they do that for a reason. I think you have to go somewhere else to shut off the. The witch will call it, and the you know, like the alarm or whatever. You know, he ain't gonna be in rush hour three. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite lines. Biohazard contamination detected. Level three. Emergency shutters will close. All personnel Go 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 go. Ooh. <sighs> Clear Redfield, you son of a badass. little sauna. Look at these guys. They were pampered. This island is, uh, is, is a little different than, you know, what I was expecting for a Resident Evil game. So this island is owned by a famous family called the Ashford family, and they are 
one third of the creators of Umbrella. Basically, Umbrella was founded by Dr. James Marcus as like the head scientist at first, before you know he was usurped by um, Albert Wesker and William Birkin, uh, and then Oswell E. Spencer, who obviously was at the top, um, and then uh, then there was uh, the Ashford family. Uh, I believe his name was um, oh, what was his name? Um, Alexander Ashford, I think, maybe? Um, there was two Ashfords. There was, like, a grandfather and a father. Uh, but the grandfather was kind of, like, the, the kind of the founder guy. Uh, along with Oswell and Dr. Marcus. Alright, so... <laughs> take the bow gunpowder. No. Um, crap, okay. I guess we come back here later, maybe? Yeah, we need a card reader. So we'll come back later. I think that's all we can do in here for now. And I, the reason I didn't get those exploded things is because I need, I need arrows and that. Like, I need to hold both. Um, so, like, I, so I need two inventory slots to combine them, and then they make, like, exploding arrows, which is, uh, really fun. Ooh-wee! And so the Ashfords built this facility here that's, uh, oh, wait, <laughs> we need a gun, and we need ammo. Wow. Even with auto lock. Wow. Whew. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we got our butts kicked there. Let's get uh, the herb first and heal. Um, so what I like about this is kind of like the first Resident Evil game and the second one, which is, and even the third one, that the environments have a lot of personality to them. Uh, like, I always found the environments of Resident Evil 4 very boring, like just like the caves and like the village. I like the village parts, but like the uh, mountainside and the caves and all that, it just like, it didn't, didn't seem to have a lot of personality to me. So there's a clue... Uh, shape of two guns, so we literally have to put two guns in there to open that door. Alright, the umbrella key. I thought, it, for some reason, I thought it was downstairs, so I was saving it for last, but... NPC 0394. What was it? NTC... Oh, three. Yay! I remembered. And that's my other favorite thing they do, because that was not in Resident Evil 1 or 2. I, I can't remember. I want to say it was in 3, but I don't think so. Because in 3, you didn't really use a lot of things more than once. So they usually run away, but I like the idea of, oh, well, you use something and you don't need it anymore. Uh, would you like to throw it away? It's like, yes, yes, please. Inventory is everything. Uh, but speaking of siblings and creepy, though, let's add creepy to the mix. These are the Ashford twins, and this is them, I think... 
at the age they're supposed to be, like they're in like their mid-teens, maybe almost, uh, li maybe a little bit older. I always got the impression that maybe they were like 16-ish, and uh, I think they're supposed to be younger than that though. But I always kind of was rationalizing it as like their their child prodigies, their geniuses, like their father or their grandfather, because um, their father is I think of the more of the business guy, and their grandfather was more of the science guy which is why they use their grandfather for an experiment, which we'll learn later. I think it's the grandfather who is the experiment. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, they're creepy twins. <laughs> and there's clearly maybe something going on with them too. Um, if you know what I mean, in a creepy, creepy way. Uh... Do I even have the room for those? I do not. Okay. Because I need two inventory slots to pick those up. But if I pick them up, I think it triggers a... Like a... A cutscene of, of some kind. Or a trap, at least. Steve? Never mind. Now I remember. <laughs> uh, Steve is the one that activates the trap, not us. I mean, we can activate the trap. It's completely optional, but... So of course the this the, 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 uh, solution is two guns cuz But I found something thanks to you. Looks cool, huh? Oh, I need those. Give them to me. <laughs> you got to be kidding. I found it and I'm keeping it. Fine. Let's make a deal. I'll trade you for something fully automatic. See you around, Claire. Adios. Hey, wait, Steve! Yeah, I wish, uh, again, I wish you could be like, dude, upstairs, uh, there's a, uh, there's a door that we need those for. And, uh, if you, if you follow me upstairs, I have an inventory chest and there are two guns in there that I will give you. <laughs> I wish you could just do that. But of course, that would just end this part of the game and... We can't have that just yet. We gotta solve more puzzles. And here we go. Our Ooh. Our first Ashford. Redfield! How dare you interfere with my operation? What are you talking about? You let yourself be captured so you could lead your people to this base! I have no idea what you're babbling about. You don't fool me! I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Oh? You must be one of Umbrella's lower level officers if you're in command of a backwater base like this one. How dare you! <laughs> the Ashford family is among the world's first and finest. My grandfather is one of the original founders of Umbrella Inc. So proud of himself. Now tell me, why have you attacked this installation? Attacked? Shortly after you arrived, my base was attacked. You must have informed your people of its location. I still don't follow you. I really don't know anything about that. Unacceptable. How can you deny it? My base has been destroyed. And thanks to you, the experimental T-Virus was released, creating countless zombies and monsters. Tell me, who do you work for? Who sent you? 
Who does number two work for? <laughs> Have it your way then. You're just a rat in a cage anyway. I'll be sure to keep you entertained before I dispose of you. <laughs> so the real person who attacked this island, we're gonna find who the, who uh, you know who they are soon. Um, but uh, yeah, they uh, they are not a friend <laughs> to Claire Redfield <laughs> at all. This open window can lead somewhere. Or nowhere. It's up to you. What do you mean, who is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me?